with what is happening in Nigeria today, Nigerians shouldn't be talking about state creation because what is happening poses an existential threat to not just Nigerians but to Nigeria as a country. If Nigeria ceases to exist in the nearest future, would there be any state to be created inside the same Nigeria that no longer exists? It's like a man whose house is on fire. Is he going to preoccupy himself to quench the fire or continue chasing rats? All hands should be on deck to save Nigeria from total collapse. But it seems Nigerians don't yet understand how deep in a mess we are in. Because if they understood, they would concentrate more than 100% of their time fighting to save the country. Just one instance, even countries that are deep in war for many years, they have never experienced a drop in their GDP by up to 50%. But it happened in Nigeria under one year, a country that is not at war. In the same country, millions are living in IDP camps despite not being in any war with itself or with a neighboring country. Anyway, despite all that is happening in Nigeria right now, you still can't blame people who are fighting for equity and justice in a country that is deeply flawed. This brings us to the issue of Anioma State being championed by Senator Ned Woko. Yes, why people don't take the issue of state creation very seriously is because we are in a democracy. Yes, democracy in quotes or on paper. We know that the main operators in this democracy do not follow the rules, but nevertheless, they are hoping that it can be done, that a state can be created under a democratic dispensation. Just like when Midwestern state was created in 1963, all other states were created by the military under military fiat. They never asked anyone whether they wanted to belong to any state or conducted any referendum. They just met with a few elites from the region and scribbled a few papers and states were created. So Ned Moko is hoping that it can be done under the current administration. That's what he explained in an X-Space where Nigerians asked him questions about the project, about the possibility of Anioma state being created out of the current Delta state. He also explained why the outgoing governor of Edo state, Godwin Obaseki, is against some of the communities currently domiciled in Edo state. These communities see themselves as Anioma people. As such, they want to join the new Anioma state if it works out. Let's take a listen. Indi was generally uh, all over the world, as you know. And, and so um, the idea is to create one more state for Ndibo. Uh, the, the fact that they use the uh, Southeast as a nomenclature is neither here nor there for me. So that is why I feel that we on this Western Bank, bank of, the, of Niger qualify to be so uh, accepted as Ndibo. Um, the, but majority of the people are very much aware of, of what we are doing. They, both from the southeast and from uh, south, they know that this is an opportunity to create one more state for Ndebo. Um, no need to keep dividing that five states. You remember some years ago, the former president of Nigeria, Buhari, said that uh, Ndebos are making noise, that they, they, they occupy the word occupy is a dot in the map. So we don't want it to be a dot, a dot in the map. If we have a Nyoma now, and maybe in the next 12 years, we'll have a Ikwere, also part of Ndibo. Uh, Ndibo area becomes enlarged. But people also, I know the, 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 the fear they have about all this violence in the Southeast, about uh, the sit at home, and the, the margins of uh, IPOB and uh, ESN. But, but this is exactly the reason why federal government wants to create one state because the, the young ones from Southeast are agitating for something. They are, they are saying that they are not being treated equal in Nigeria. That they want the equal treatment like others from the west of Nigeria to the north of Nigeria. So we believe, I believe that once this state is created, it will address those um, violence, it will address the injustices, it will address many things, and there'll be hopefully there'll be peace in the area because, um, for once, since after the war, something has been done to address the Igbo's fears of, of being left out in Nigeria, and so it will happen. I believe it will happen. Um, I understand that you know a state transcends you know ethnicity, 
tribe or cultural affiliation. But that said, my question borders on the people of the Igbanke found currently in Edo State. What is there any plan actually currently to you know include them in this proposed Anioma State? I mean, um, on the you know premise that they are actually related to the you know Ika people that are currently also found in Delta states, or could we say that their fate has already been sealed? And I'm speaking about the Igbanke people. Thank you very much, sir. That's the question. Thank you. I have been meeting with so many delegations from the Ibanke um, to the, um, the fact that there are about, about 17 communities that want to belong to Anyoma. They are not comfortable where they are. They feel that they are not Edo's. And, and by the way, I, I discussed this with the, with, the, with, the, with the outgoing governor of uh, Edo State, about the need for those people to... Will he object to those people being part of Anoma State? He told me yes, and he will object because some of those communities are in very strategic locations where there are oil and gas. And Edo State doesn't have too much of oil and gas like Delta. And they feel that if we are, if they are, if they should allow some of these communities in the Banke and others to come to uh, Anoma, that they will have no, uh, they won't have much resources. But we know that most of those communities are, are Igbos. They they say it, they speak Igbo, uh, they are Eka Igbos, if you know what I mean. Uh, they, they want to be part of the new Anoma state. Um, but the current drive, the current drive is limited to the nine local government areas. Just as, as I told you, there are still drive from people from across the Niger, from Onicha, from Obaru, from Uguta, and Doni, that they want to belong to Anyoma. But as you said, you know, state, state transcends beyond religion and, and, and tribe and, and culture. You know, so wherever we find ourselves, we have to make a home out of it. Um, maybe in the future we can bring those in the banking and go uh, towards Anyoma. But let's create an Anyoma state first. Then maybe in the future we can go for some boundary adjustments. It is done. It is possible to to get this done through boundary adjustments. And so I'm, I'm hoping that we can achieve that. Well, I don't foresee any. I don't foresee any where we are at, at this point in time. Um, it's just about time. Everything has been done in accordance with the constitution. You know, we've gotten all the support that we need back home and we will, this will happen. Um, just like uh, the immediate past governor said to me, he said to me, he is not against the creation of Anyoma State, but that he, what is against is that Anyoma should be part of South East. But I've said to him and to others, so if that is the case, then let everybody work towards the creation of Anyoma State, then we can sort out the zoning together at the right time with the president and his advisors. So I don't see any particular uh, obstacles on the way. Nothing, nothing that cannot be handled. Not at this level, anyway. So when created, Anyoma State will be the first state outside of the military construct. That means we need votes. And you mentioned about potential um, nine potential votes from the southeast already. So looking forward and given your um, given the temperature in the room um, in Abuja, what do you what do you think? Do you think that we have or we will potentially have enough votes to push Anioma to be the first state created under the democratic dispensation democratically? Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you. If we cast our vote today, either in the Committee on uh, Constitutional Amendment or in the Senate as a whole, a normal state will be created as of today. But it goes, it goes beyond that. There'll be, there'll be public hearings, as I told you before, and then uh, there'll be a third reading of the bill after the public hearings. Then... Uh, Mr. President uh, will get all the 
or most of the states, at least about 24 states, has to assemble together for them to sign for it. And that shouldn't be a problem because if this is what the government wants to do, they will do it. It's just about inviting the speakers of the 24 states that they've chosen who are likely to understand what is being done for, for justice and for equity. So, look, everybody know, understands that Ndibo have been wronged and, and undermined over the years since after the, the during and after the civil war. You know, I, I, I've been following up on something, for example, that during, towards the end of the civil war, there was an Asaba massacre. There was a mass massacre in uh, Ewulu and some other areas in Anyoma now. And they were massacred because they, they are Igbos. They said, we're going to kill all the Igbos. So they killed them. They, they didn't kill them because they're from <laughs> this side. They said, anybody, as far as, look, I, I live in Abuja, but as far as the Northern is concerned, anybody from Benin is Igbo. Anybody up to uh, Akwa Ibo, up to Bayelsa, up to uh, Enugu, were all Igbos. That's why it was Southeast, uh, it was called uh, um, Eastern, Eastern Nigeria before, as you know. And then that Eastern Nigeria included the current Akwaibum, current uh, Calabar, um, Cross River State, uh, current uh, River State, current Bayelsa. You know, they were all part of this uh, Eastern region before. You know, and um, I am sure that uh, we're not heading towards any regional government now, but Ndibo are all over the world. I said this before, they are all over the world. All we're just trying to do is to acknowledge that there are Indibo on the other on this side of the Niger that are equally as as big to be a state. We have nine local government areas. We have a population of over almost three million. We are bigger than Bayelsa State. We are bigger than Gombe State and, and some other states. And in terms of natural resources, we are about the fifth largest if Anoma were to be created today. So it is a very viable uh, thing, and uh, I, I'm, I'm glad that all most Igbo people uh, from this from Southeast are supporting this project, and we are also happy that this is happening because we know that they have acknowledged our brotherhood. We are in this together. We suffered together during the civil war. Nobody made any distinction whether you are from Asaba or from uh, Enugu or, or Wari. You are an Igbo man. Once you are an evil man, you are an evil man. And so, um, the earlier we accepted, let me let me tell you, the, those who, who are saying that they are not they are not evils, they are saying it because you know just like you know when you you know those who who achieve success have many people identifying with them, but when, when you are defeated, nobody wants to identify with you. That's exactly what happened. You know when the uh, Eastern evils were uh, lost the war along with us, we, we most of our people felt, oh, okay, you know what, let's be in denial. Because once we're in denial, maybe they will, they will now um, assimilate us into the mainstream of Nigeria. But that is not going to happen. That has never happened. And the earlier we understand that there are three main tribes in Nigeria. The Hausas, Fulani, that's one. The Yorubas, two. And then the Ibo. So it's either we are part of the three main tribes, or we remain in extreme minority without any 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 hope of progress beyond what we are doing now. 